Shri Mad Bhagavatam Grantaraja Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmad Yasya Yato Nivayad Itaratas Charthesu Avigya Swarat Dene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Vari Medam Yata Vinimaya Yatra Trisargo Mesha Dam Nasrina Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Timahi Oh, my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh, all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed in illusion, into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. appear factual, although they are unreal. Therefore, meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravutra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu Ivedam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Imad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Imva Prayer Ishwaraha Tadyo Hidi Avurudite Tra Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. It is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Truth uproots the threefold miseries. Beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nikama kalpataro galitam falam. Kumukad amrita dravya samyutam. Ipata bhagavatam rasam malayam. Muhur aho rasaka bhuvi bhavaka. Oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. 
although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. In Vatam Swakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Vidyam Taksto Abhadrani, Vidunati Suhit Satam. Yeah, I was making a mistake. Astap Praesu Abhadresu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Dear Bhavati Naistiki To hear about Lord Sri Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. That's dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one be, okay, so that's the next word. Tadarajas tamo bhavo. Kama loba dayas chaye. Chete taranavidam. It found sattve prasiddhati. As he hears more about Krishna, I'm sorry, by develop. Uh, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Srimad Bhagavatam Grantaraj Ki J Canto 1, Chapter 3, Chapter 13, Verse Number 41. Narada Uvacha. Makanchana suchorajan Yad Ishwara Vasam Jagat Lokasafala Yasyame Bahanti Balam Isitu Sasamya Sam ya sam yu nakti bhutani sa eva vi yu nakti cha Translation and purported by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivinoda Swami Srila Prabhupada Sri Narada said O pious king do not lament for anyone for everyone is under the control of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, all living beings and their leaders carry on worship to be well protected. It is he only who brings them together and disperses them. Report by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Every living being, either in this material world or in the spiritual world, is under the control of the Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead. Beginning from Brahmaji, the leader of this universe, down to the insignificant ant, all are abiding by the order of the Supreme Lord. Thus, the constitutional position of the living being is subordination under the control of the Lord. The foolish living being, especially man, 
artificially rebels against the law of the supreme and thus becomes chastised as an asura or lawbreaker. A living being is placed in a particular position by the order of the supreme lord and he again and he is again shifted from that place by the order of the supreme lord or his authorized agents brahma shiva indra chandra maharaj yudhisthira or in modern history napoleon akbar alexander gandhi subhash and nehru are all servants of the lord and they are placed in and removed from their respective positions by the supreme will of the Lord. None of them is independent. Even though such men or leaders rebel so as not to recognize the supremacy of the Lord, they are put under still more rigorous laws of material nature by different miseries. Only the foolish man, therefore, says that there is no God. Maharaj Yudhisthira was being convinced of this naked truth because he was greatly overwhelmed by the sudden departure of his old uncles and aunt. Maharaj Dushirastra was placed in that position according to his past deeds. He had already suffered or enjoyed the benefits accrued to him in the past, but due to his good luck, somehow or other he had a good younger brother, Vidura. And by his instruction, he left to achieve salvation by closing all accounts in the material world. Ordinarily, one cannot change the course of one's due happiness and distress by plan. Everyone has to accept them as they come under the subtle arrangement of kala, or invincible time. There is no use trying to counteract them. The best thing is, therefore, that one should endeavor to achieve salvation. And this prerogative is given only to a man, only to man, because of his developed condition of mental activities and intelligence. Only for a man are there different Vedic instructions for attainment of salvation during the human form of existence. One who misuses this opportunity of advanced intelligence is verily condemned and put into different types of miseries, in the, either in this present life or in the future. That is the way the Supreme controls everyone. Hila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So not even a blade of grass moves without the will of the Lord. Everything is subordinate and everyone is subordinate to Krishna. And he is the supreme personality of Godhead. No one is equal to or greater than him. And Bhaktiram Yagatapasam, he is the recipient of all sacrifices is the Bhukta, the recipient. And Bhaktaram uh, Yagatavasam, Sarvaloka Maheshram, he is the proprietor of everything, including our bodies, our soul, etc. And Sridam Sarvabhutaman, he is our best and uh, most well wishing friend. There's no one closer to us than Krishna. Yajgat Vasantam Richati. A person who knows this attains peace, real peace. Prabhupada called this verse the peace formula. Everyone is praying, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Well, this is Shanti. Bhaktaram Yagitabhasam Sarvaloka Maheshram Suridam Sarvabhutanam Gyatvamam Santi Richati. If you want Shanti, you have to know these three things about Krishna. And then you'll have peace because you understand that this struggle with material nature is a fruitless struggle. It's impossible to overcome the laws of material nature. But if we understand what is our real duty in life, our real duty in life is to surrender to Krishna through bhakti yoga, 
devotional service under the directions of bona fide gurus and spend our lifetime in devotion to the Lord so that at the moment of death one can remember the Lord. As, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Anta Kali Chamameva, Smaran Mukva, Kalevaram, Yaprayati Samad Bhava, Yatinasti Atrasam Sayaha. And he says that, uh, and whoever at the end of his life quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature, of this there's no doubt. So this is very interesting the way Prabhupada explains. First of all, uh, yeah, he says, Yeah, he says that uh, Maharaj Jitarasa was placed in that position according to his past deeds. Yeah, he's now he's, he's uh, under the protection of y Yudhisthira and the Pandavas who actually killed all his sons. <laughs> After he plotted for years how to kill the Pandavas. So he has already suffered or enjoyed the benefits accrued to him in the past. But due to his good luck, somehow or other, he had a good younger brother, Vidura. And by his instruction, he left to achieve salvation by closing all accounts in the material world. So that's the key, closing all accounts in the material world. It's just like if you go bankrupt, you have to close all your accounts. So all of us are going to go bankrupt as far as life goes at one point. And therefore, rather than holding on to all accounts, we can't take them with us, we should close them so that we can uh, leave uh, without any remorse and achieve salvation by, uh, by completely meditating on Krishna. I remember when... Uh, Tirtha Maharaj was very, very sick. And then it became clear that uh, he was not going to get better. So then he was advised, he said, now you have to go into deep meditation on your relationship with Prabhupada and Krishna and not be involved in anything else. So I remember there's a video of him giving his last uh, address, public address. Class. and he was actually crying and and he you know he he was he, everybody knew this is the last time they're going to actually see him in public and then he went into his deep state of contemplation of, of Srila Prabhupada and Krishna and left his body so ordinarily one cannot change the course of one's due happiness and distress by plan yeah, you can make all the plans you want. Everyone has to accept them as they come under the subtle arrangement of color or invincible time. Yes, we, we're all subject to our previous karma, which is a mixed bag of happiness and distress. There's no use trying to counteract them. The best thing is, therefore, that one should endeavor to achieve salvation. And this prerogative, in other words, this... this opportunity that's specifically for human beings, not for animals, is given only to man because of his developed condition of mental activities and intelligence. Yeah, we have the ability to think of Krishna 24 hours a day. And we see many examples that support that. Like, for example, there are many people who think only about money and sex all day long during their whole life. Still, they function in society. Their fathers, their uh, teachers, their CEOs, their friends, you know, they're, they're functioning in different roles as if everything is normal. But nothing is normal because in the mind, they're focused on two things, that is money and sex. So even though that's in their mind all the time, still they function 
They dress nicely. They put on uh, cologne, expensive cologne. And when they talk, they talk nicely and everything. But mind are these two things that they're meditating on all the time. <clears throat> so if they can do that, why can't we meditate all the time on Krishna? And still function in society. But when the bell rings, ding, 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 uh, your time is almost up. And we should, without any hesitation, uh, prepare ourselves uh, to close all accounts and completely focus on what is most important in our life, and that's our relationship with Guru and Krishna. So there's no, no use trying to counteract them, that is, uh, trying to overcome your, uh, with your fate. If you surrender to Krishna, then your fate from previous life, your karma is put on hold, and you have a chance to engage in Krishna consciousness. Etamam papad, uh, in the Yesam Twantikatam Papam, Janat Jananam Punya Karmanam, Tedwandu Mohanir Mukta Bajanti Mam Jutarataha. That uh, persons who acted piously in this life and in a previous life and whose sinful reactions have been completely eradicated. They can take to Krishna consciousness and, and also they have to be free from the dualities of delusion. They engage themselves in my service with determination. So Prabhupada says, those eligible for elevation to the transcendental position are mentioned in this verse. For those who are sinful, atheistic, foolish, and deceitful, it is very difficult to transcend the duality of desire and hate. Only those who have passed their lives in practicing the regulative principles of religion, who have acted piously, and who have conquered sinful reactions, can accept devotional service and gradually rise to the pure knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then, gradually, they can meditate in trance on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the process of being situated on the spiritual platform. Then, Gradually, they can meditate in trance on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This elevation is possible in Krishna consciousness in the association of pure devotees. For in the association of great devotees, one can be delivered from delusion. It is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 552 that if one actually wants to be liberated, he must render service to the devotees. Mahat sevam dwaram ahur vimukte. But one who associates with materialistic people is on the path leading to the darkest region of existence. Tamo dwaram yositam sangisangam. They're engaged, they're interested in sense gratification and yosit. That means, yosit means uh, enjoying sex. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, making money to have sustainable sense gratification. But one who associates with materialistic people is on the path leading to the darkest region of existence. All the devotees of the Lord traverse the earth just to recover the conditioned souls from their delusion. What's the delusion? Thinking that I am this body, thinking that uh, the purpose of life is to pleasure my body, please my body. And working really hard, making money, helps me to have sustained sense gratification. All this is a delusion. Delusion like, first of all, there's an illusion. And when you act on the illusion as if it's real, then you're acting in a state of delusion. Unless one is reinstated in his own constitutional position, it is not possible to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead or to be fully engaged in his transcendental loving service with determination. Well, what is our uh, 
cons own constitutional position, well, mamayamamsa jiva bhuta jiva loka sanatana, we're the eternal part and parcel of Krishna. And therefore, we have an original relationship with Krishna that will be revealed to us when we're completely purified of this desire to dominate nature, exploit it for our own selfish purposes. So those people who can't make this adjustment, already Krishna informs them that they will be a failure in life. And he says in the ninth chapter, Mogashi Moga Karmano Moga Jnana Vichetasa. Raksasam Chaiva. Okay, what's what's that verse? Ninth chapter, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Chaiva Pakritim Mohinim Shrita. Those who are thus bewildered are attracted by demonic and atheistic views in that deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruit of activities and their cultural knowledge are all defeated. So here's a warning that if we don't take seriously Krishna's pleading with us to just give up all these foolish fabricated dharmas, Muslim dharma, Christian dharma, Hindu dharma, Buddhist dharma, this dharma, that dharma. Dharma is your uh, occupational duty. So it is your occupational duty to strap a bomb on your body and blow it up in a public place to kill as many people as possible? Is your occupational duty to uh, be engaged in politics? Politics means friends and enemies. Is your occupational duty just making money, more money, more money, more money for more sense gratification, more sense gratification? Or is your occupational duty is is to serve Krishna with love and devotion. We have to decide what is our occupational duty. That's called dharma. Notice the word occupational. It means that there's activity. You know, we have to act. But should we act on behalf of Krishna or should we act on behalf of our own selfish desires? This is a decision that we have to make in life. But if we act for our own selfish desires, we're guaranteed failure. Mogaishya moga karma no moga chita. Moga jnana vicheta saha raksasim asurim chaiva pakritim mohinim shrita. Those who are thus bewildered are attracted by demonic and atheistic views. In that deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruit of activities, and their cultural knowledge are all defeated. There are many devotees who assume themselves to be in Krishna consciousness and devotional service, but at heart, do not accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, as the absolute truth. For them, the fruit of devotional service, going back to Godhead, will never be tasted. Similarly, those who are engaged in fruit of pious activities and who are ultimately hoping to be liberated from this material entanglement will never be successful either because they deride the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. In other words, persons who mock Krishna are to be understood to be demonic or atheistic. As described in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, such demonic miscreants never surrender to Krishna. Therefore, their mental speculations to arrive at the absolute truth bring them to the false conclusion that the ordinary living entity and Krishna are one and the same. With such a false conviction, they think that the body of any human being is now simply covered by material nature and that as soon as one is liberated from this material body, there is no difference between God and himself. This attempt to become one with Krishna will be baffled because of delusion. So he's talking about mayavadis who think they can become one with God in every respect. Such atheistic and demoniac cult cultivation of spiritual knowledge is always futile. 
Now, look at that phrase. Look at what he just wrote. He said, such atheistic and demoniac cultivation of spiritual knowledge. Have you ever heard a phrase like that? Such atheistic and demoniac cultivation of spiritual knowledge. In other words, there are people who study the Vedas, but who are actually atheistic and demoniac. And they skew out false conclusions. In fact, in another place, Prabhupada said, the problem is that mayavadis, those who are talking all about nirakar and nirupa and so like so so many nears, uh, God is, uh, doesn't have a body, doesn't have uh, ears, doesn't have eyes, doesn't have a nose. He can't accept your offerings. Uh, he's not. Uh, God is not a person. But people are talking like that all the time. And they say, well, you, you merge into this Brahman and then you become God. They're actually demons, <laughs> according to this, and atheistic. <clears throat> and the, their culture of spiritual knowledge is always futile, always will be a failure. That is the indication of this verse. For such persons, cultivation of knowledge in the Vedic literature, like the Vedanta Sutra and the Upanishads, is always baffled. It is a great offense, therefore, to consider Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to be an ordinary man. Those who do so are certainly deluded because they cannot understand the eternal form of Krishna. The Brihad Vishnu Smriti clearly states, one who considers the body of Krishna to be material should be driven out from all rituals and activities of the Shruti and the Smriti. And if one by chance sees his face, one should at once take bath in the Ganges to rid himself of infection. People jeer at Krishna because they are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Their destiny is certainly to take birth after birth in the species of atheistic and demoniac life. Perpetually, their real knowledge will remain under delusion and gradually they will regress to the darkest region of creation. There you go. That is a serious indictment of people who misrepresent the Vedic knowledge due to their own selfish material desires. So here we have everyone has to accept, and one cannot change the course of one's due happiness and distress by plan. In other words, you can't make any plan, a five-year plan, 10-year plan, uh, a plan to... Uh, take the supplements and uh, work out and uh, walk every day and no, it's not gonna work. Everyone has to accept them as they come under the subtle arrangement of color and principal time. There is no use trying to counteract them. He's talking about one's previous karma. The best thing is therefore that one should endeavor to achieve salvation and this prerogative is given only to human beings because of the developed condition of mental activities and intelligence. Srila Prabhupada, Patita Pavan, Ekijay, Haribo. Are there any questions? He's talking about A living being is placed in a particular position by the order of the Supreme Lord, and he is again shifted from that place by the order of the Supreme Lord or his authorized agents. Brahma, Shiva, Indra, Chandra, Maharaj, Yudhisthira, or in modern history, Napoleon, Akbar, Alexander, Gandhi, Subhash, and Nehru are all servants of the Lord, and they are placed in and removed from their respective positions by the supreme will of the Lord. None of them is independent. That's the point. All these great leaders of society that he just named, they get that position because they have acted piously in previous lives. But they, they're not independent. And if they don't do the right thing, they're taken out by the Lord. Even though such men are leaders, and even though such men or leaders rebel so as not to recognize the supremacy of the Lord, they are put under 
still more rigorous laws of the material world by different miseries. In other words, if you're a leader in society and you mislead people, you're going to get the full weight of uh, Krishna's wrath because previously you were pious, that's why you got such a prominent position, and then as soon as you achieved that position, you revolted against the authority of God, you're going to be punished severely. That's what it means. And each one of them was. One what? Hate? Oh, he already gave them up to me. <laughs> because of their good karma in previous lives, they, they became leaders of society. But when they got into that position of power, it went to their head, and they started thinking that they, could, they are independent. And they started to revolt against the supremacy of the Lord and act as if they are independent, they are all-powerful. So they get really, really zapped by karma at that point. Well, there was a king once, and a famous king, who had his throne taken to the shore of the ocean. And uh, when evening came, when high tide was coming in, he ordered it, stop. And it didn't stop. And then he said, see, I am not the supreme authority. Greater authority is than me. Although I'm the king, if I tell my people stop, they have to stop. But I can't stop the ocean because I'm not the supreme controller. He was a smart king. He demonstrated that he was not independent, that he also was subjected, subject to the laws of nature or controlled by God. But other other people, they think they can do anything, you know, like, like Stalin and all these people. Or, you know, these great leaders of society, they think they're all powerful, they can do anything they want. And therefore, the karmic reaction for that is extremely severe. And then when That's his mercy, don't you understand? That's his mercy. They were not properly using their intelligence. They were not properly functioning as leaders of society. They became puffed up by that power. If you really want to know who a person is, give them power. Then you can see whether they're good or bad. So if they're bad, after getting, they had to get that position. They got that position because they were pious in previous lives. So then, if they become atheistic and demoniac and mislead people, then the, then the punishment is severe. Which is rightfully so. Otherwise, they would never learn. How are they going to learn if they become an animal, you're saying? No. In yeah, next they life. Have, have well, uh, see, when that, that, the Lord remains neutral. But the Lord's devotees, pure devotees, are not neutral. It's like Vidura, right? It's, Prabhupada says, somehow or other, Jitarasa was very fortunate because he had a good younger brother who went out of his way. I mean, he came after he was insulted and he left. He comes back to try and save his brother. So, uh, and this is explained in Bhagavad Gita. One second, let me find that. Uh, the Lord's devotees are even more merciful than the Lord because they will risk violating the inst 
an instruction of the Lord in order to help people. So this is explained at the end of the Bhagavad Gita in verse Idam te natpaskaya nabaktaya kadachana nachasu su save vachyam nachamamyo biasuyati. This confidential knowledge may never be explained to those who are not austere or devoted or engaged in devotional service, nor to one who is envious of me, Krishna says. So, normally, devotees should not explain Bhagavad Gita to such people, right? And, but, in a later verse, Shadavam Anasuyas Cha Srinuyad Apiyo Nara Sopi Mukta Subalo Kan Prapnu Yad and one who listens with faith and without envy becomes free from sinful reactions and attains to auspicious planets where the pious dwell. So in this verse, the purport, Prabhupada says, in the 67th verse of this chapter, the previous verse I just read, the Lord explicitly forbade the, Bhag the Gita's being spoken to those who are envious of the Lord. He forbids us. In other words, Bhagavad Gita is for the devotees only. But it, is, it so happens that sometimes the devotee of the Lord will hold open class. And in that class, not all the students are expected to be devotees. Why do such persons hold open class when Krishna forbids it? It is explained here that although not everyone is a devotee, still there are many men or many people, who are not envious of Krishna. In other words, they don't, they don't necessarily believe in Krishna, but they're not envious, right? When you're envious, you try and destroy belief in God. Right? They have faith in him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If such persons hear from a bona fide devotee about the Lord, the result is that they become at once free from all sinful reactions and after that, attain to the planetary system where all righteous persons are situated. Therefore, simply by hearing the Bhagavad Gita, even a person who does not try to be a pure devotee attains the result of righteous activities. Thus, a pure devotee of the Lord gives everyone a chance to become free from all sinful reactions and to become a devotee of the Lord. The so devotees are sometimes more merciful than the Lord himself because they understand the purpose of the Lord. Yes. Yes, whoever you meet. Yes. Uh, so also, if we look at another interesting statement by Prabhupada. <clears throat> Men who are ignorant cannot appreciate activities in Krishna consciousness, and therefore, Lord Krishna advises us not to disturb them and simply waste valuable time. But the devotees of the Lord are more kind than the Lord because they understand the purpose of the Lord. Consequently, they undertake all kinds of risks, even to the point of approaching ignorant men to try to engage them in the acts of Krishna consciousness, which are absolutely necessary for the human being. Now, let me give you a practical example. There's this one farm that I go to to uh, buy hay and, and also uh, composted cow dung and things like that, right? Now, in that farm, they have lots of cows, lots, like uh, maybe a thousand or more, right? And they really mistreat the cows. People go to them to slaughter the cow, to eat them. Like Muslims go there to, to buy cows, things like that, they have them killed fresh, right? 
So these guys are heavy duty demons, right? But I've built up a relationship with them, right? So yesterday when I went to get something from them, <laughs> the the big guy, the father, you know, uh, who's had, you know, uh, bypass surgery, like he showed me the the uh, stitches <laughs> in his chest, you know, and he, now he's like, you know, eating raw carrots and things like that. <laughs> but on his desk was a bottle of whiskey, right? So his son comes in, pours himself a, a glass of whiskey, you know, and they're both talking to me. And uh, that day, the father, you know, when I, what I was going to buy, he said, it's on me today. Meaning he gave it to me for free. So because of the little, little relationship I've developed with them, they know who I am, they know I'm a devotee, they know we protect cows, we don't kill them, they know we're vegetarians. I mean, I've, I've preached to them a little bit, right? As much as they're able to understand. So now they're giving me favors now, you see? So they're doing a little bit of service. Right? <laughs> so that's, that's, you know, I mean, who would want to associate with such people, right? But it's not only because of business, but be, because, uh, you know, the devotee will take that risk and give them little doses, you know, as much as they're capable of understanding. Haribo. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Ki Every day, finding something new and interesting. It's been, it's already there, but uh, shaking it out, separating 